I think I counted four George Kittle pancakes. And I was like, I understand that Kittle isn't the main target <laughs> whenever it comes to the passing game. But I was just like, good Lord, George Kittle was the best player. I really believe that George Kittle was the best offensive player in this game. They used him in max protect I had four pancakes. PFF scores came out after I finished my breakdown. And I said that several times on the breakdown, highest rated player, rightfully. So he finished with an 84.8 dude was just crazy. He played 55 of 57 offensive snaps and was just killing people, man. You watch the, Debo touchdown run. You watch the 51 yarder from CMC. You watch uh, it, whatever. If there's a successful play, 85 is taking care of business somewhere. And I, I just really thought Kittle was just, he was killing it, man. He was just having such a blast out there. And there's a clip, and I got to put this out there. I'm going to get Juan to cut this one. Debo scores his touchdown, you know, on the side. And Kittle just went over the top of a dude pancaked him, rolled over, and is just laying on his back like a turtle, celebrating by himself just because he's so happy. You know, it's just kind of who he is. It's so <laughs> RTP, kittle cakes and syrup all day, baby. That dude was just killing people, man. He was killing people. Oh, it was awesome. Uh, so the top five offensively, George Kittle, Trent Williams, Jawan Jennings played 27 snaps. That's about what he's going to be. Absolute just stud run blocking. The penalty, I hated the penalty. I really, really did. Brian says, yeah, anybody else uh, want to throw up after that flag? Yeah, that was a dirty play. He's going to get fined. He's going to lose money, and he should. That was not kosher, man. That was not cool. Not cool at all. And so the crackback days of the 80s and whatever else, I get it, and you love to see – that type of violence, but not when it's directed at a defensive guy. I hated it. You don't have to do that. You just got to slow him down and get in his way. You ain't got to freaking ruin his, uh, dude, smash the hell out of him. And again, like Jawan Jennings is Dre Greenlaw. And they both made the same similar mistakes at the different time. We applaud them and we love them for how violent and just impactful they are because opposing the teams hate them. They hate them. Nobody wants to play against Dre Greenlaw. Nobody wants to play against Juwan Jennings. And sometimes you got to take the bad with the good. And obviously you coach them up and, man, we can't have that. We can't have that. We can't have that. But not at the extent of, I don't want you to be a dog. Like, Juwan Jennings is a dog. That dude had the highest run blocking grade, even over Kittle, who had four pancakes. Juwan Jennings had an 88.6 run blocking. Kittle had an 86. Incredible. Ayuk was fourth. Depot fifth. CMC six, Brock Purdy seventh. Like and awesome games. You go to the flip side, ugh. lowest rated player again, Spencer Burford. I thought that he had a decent game. I counted three or four really bad plays. Just kind of overextended. But here, I'll say this. <clears throat> you know, CMC on his 51 yard touchdown run, or not touchdown, but just big run. Listen to this. Some great blocks. Debo had a great block. <clears throat> Juwan had a great block being a, you know, going in motion and doing what he does. And, uh, you know, after that, it was just instincts took over. But those guys, you know, George had a great block too, point of attack, juice, all those guys all day, man. The O line, um, they play so hard and fight for every single yard and um, love those guys. There's some back and forth after that with you and. I just, what's up, man? Like, good to see you. <laughs> you know, some casualties, just uh, casual conversation. Oh, man. Now, I will say this on the after the 51 yard run, you got a Kello over there. I don't know what the hell a Kello Witherspoon and number one Kendrick were doing, the two corners. Why were they talking trash the whole game? They got roasted by everybody, they got ran over by everybody. And they just kept stepping up trying to talk their trash. And it was just like, do you understand we're taking advantage of you repeatedly this entire game? Like, what are you doing? But they just kept talking. Like, I I don't know, commend them. Like, <laughs> knock me down 10 times, I'll get up 11, I guess. But, uh, yeah, you could see Chris McCaffrey on the broadcast view. And it was, uh... <laughs> Yeah, anyway, if you want to go watch it, you'll watch it. A lot of cuss words. I don't want to go through there, but it was clear as day, and he said the same thing twice. That was awesome, man. 
so for him to come back and like, oh, congenials, you know, we were just kind of hanging out. But yeah, I mean, they they really could do whatever they wanted on offense. The biggest negative, and I want to talk about this a little bit, was the Brock Purdy throws. Because, you know, Shanahan was asked, what were your thoughts on the Brock overthrows? And here's what he had to say. I, th- I thought they were all tough ones. I, I think the, the Ayuk one was probably um, his toughest one because it was, it was just his number one read and it just sailed a little bit. Um, the one with Debo, I mean, he went all the way across the board in a, in a really tough read. And, um, yeah, you'd love him to hit it, but he did miss it. And um, the one to Jennings, um, I, that one didn't bother me much. It was, we're a little surprised the ball was going there and everyone else was covered and he just tried to make a play. But the main thing he did today was protect the ball. Um, besides those three misses, which um, none of them were easy, but he took care of the football, didn't give them a chance to touch it. And um, when he was under duress, he uh, was smart. Yeah, it's so you look at Stafford, two turnovers, that's huge. You look at Purdy, clean play clock, play sheet. You know, every time he threw the ball, even though they were overthrows, never in jeopardy of being intercepted, and that's the difference. That's the difference. Now, you can't say that he missed all his deep throws, and I see people already putting that out there. He hit two. He hit Jennings on a 20-yard pass, a little over. Uh, back shoulder fade, awesome. And he hit Debo, which drew the pass interference call in the end zone. So there's room to grow. That That's what that is. You know what I mean? And so not too concerned about any of that stuff. Right here, John, am I the only one that loves CMC talking trash to Witherspoon? Yeah, like you bust off a 55 yard, 51-yard run, and you lower your shoulder and run over a guy at the end of it, and that corner gets up talking to you like he just got a tackle for loss. He didn't even tackle him. CMC ran over him. And so, like, I'm, I'm sure it's just like, wait, what? Didn't I just knock you out on a 50-yard gain? Why are you talking to me? Do you, do you not know what's happening out there? And another thing, too, like, Akello, I think Akello, Akello's soft. He was soft when he was in college. He was soft with us. He's soft since. He was soft this game. He was soft. I wonder, let me, I don't know. Let me look. I, I didn't check to see where he fit. Maybe he had a good game. Uh, Darion Kendrick was the, he had a 37.2 score. Akello Witherspoon had to 57.8. So not terrible, actually. But he did have a missed tackle. He had one tackle. So yeah, like, whatever. Like, you were a below average player. But, like, what the hell? Your former team, and you're getting up and trying to talk trash to the one guy that wasn't your former teammate, trying to act all tough after a 50 yard gain? Man, shut the hell up. Like, ah, your time for trying to be tough around these guys, this team, you had that chance for three years and never did it. Yeah, anyway, I've, I've never I've never been an Akello guy, and whenever he did that whole, yeah, I'm going to play, I'm going to play, took all the reps, and then right before the game against Miami, says, yeah, coach, sorry, can't go. It's just bothering me too much. After telling the team all week, yeah, I can go, I can go, I can go. Um, Shanahan didn't hold back either. He, he put that out there in the public. Y'all remember that game, that Ryan Fitzpatrick game where he lit us up with the Dolphins? That's Akello's fault. Was he the one getting posterized out there? He wasn't. That was all Akello's fault. Uh, anyway, I digress. I'm going to get emails about that one. I, I, I believe in positivity. I believe in uplifting people. You put your teammates in a bad situation, and then you act like you're the victim. Get the hell out of here, man. I ain't got no time for that shit. I ain't got none. None. Be a man. Yeah, I messed up. I put a team in a bad spot. I shouldn't have done that. Done. Then the, you squashed it. But then you leave the team, and you act like we did you wrong. Bitch, please. Are you kidding me? I'm glad you got your ass ran over. I'm sorry. Man, I'm getting I'm getting hot over here. Oh, and he's he is exactly what the Rams are. That's the thing. Soft finesse. You finesse. That's what this team is. You kick field goals with time expiring when you're down 10 points. Soft ass team. I hate the Rams. Oh. Sorry, man. I'm getting mad. <laughs> uh, getting mad over here. But uh anyway, great win, man. Great win. And, oh, man, that's going to be so many DMs and emails. The 49ers Rush Podcast.